Hey there, I'm Michelle Zolman. My pronouns are she, her. I work at Treehouse as the training program manager. Today I'll be co-presenting this course with my colleague Hope Armstrong. This course will introduce ethical design, which considers the moral implication of one's work. With all the power that technology yields, it comes with tremendous responsibility. We'll reflect on how tricky interfaces and dirty data practices have negative consequences on society. You'll use ethical frameworks and tools to evaluate and align your actions with your values. And to wrap things up, we'll look at advocacy techniques to nurture human-centered decisions in your organization. This course is for everyone who works in tech, regardless of their role. I'll use the term design in the general sense to refer to those who design, develop, deploy, and manage technology. Let's get started by defining ethical design. Design ethics concerns moral behavior and responsible choices in the practice of design. It guides how designers work with clients, colleagues, and the end users of products, how they conduct the design process, how they determine the features of products, and how they assess the ethical significance or moral worth of the products that result from the activity of designing. The book Tragic Design summarizes it like this. Badly designed products serve their creator, or sponsor, first, and the user second. In 2015, Volkswagen was issued a violation of the Clean Air Act in the United States. The Environmental Protection Agency discovered Volkswagen intentionally programmed diesel engines to activate their emissions control only during inspections. The cars appeared to pass air quality standards during testing, although they created up to 40 times the emissions in real-world driving. The software was placed in 11 million cars worldwide, leading to a massive increase in greenhouse gas emissions that contribute to climate change. This scandal has cost Volkswagen at least an estimated $33.3 billion. A software engineer was sentenced to federal prison for implementing the software. This is just one example of how software has real-world consequences. Hi, I'm Hope Armstrong. I'm a product designer and teacher at Treehouse, and my pronouns are she, her. Let's look at an ethical framework. Here's the ethical hierarchy of needs, as defined by R.L. Balkin and Lara Kolbag. The most foundational section is human rights. This is when technology respects and protects civil liberties, reduces inequalities, and benefits democracy. Building off of that, human effort is when technology respects people's effort by being functional, convenient, and reliable. At the top of the pyramid is human experience, which is when technology is intuitive and joyful to use. We can use this framework when evaluating the morality of our work. You may have heard the terms inclusive design, usability, accessibility, universal design, and human-centered design. These are related terms that evoke the humanity involved with technology. After all, as much as we focus on technology being built, we need to consider the people it affects. So what does it mean to act ethically? Well, it's complicated. Each of us has different boundaries for safety and privacy, and our identity and personal experiences shape our needs. If you have a history of being racially discriminated against, you may hesitate to disclose your identity on a form. And there are cultural differences too. What is acceptable in one country may be negatively perceived in another. Further, it changes over time, the term Overton window explains this phenomenon. An Overton window is the range of policies deemed acceptable to the mainstream population at a given time. A few decades ago, putting a listening device in your living room would have felt extreme, as if you're wiretapping yourself. But now that voice-activated devices are so common, it's normalized. Although, it's still a bit creepy if you really think about the implications.